So globally, so basically, um, and each availability zone has multiple data centers. So you can imagine the staking infrastructure that Coinbase operates is really distributed globally across, you know, dozens of data centers, um, Asia, Europe, um, South America. There's really uh, not much staking infra in the U.S. for tax reasons, but in any case, uh, it it was pretty. It was an honor to kind of build that. And yeah, work it's got to be a pretty cool, Coinbase. you know, badge of honor to have. Even looking back, knowing just you know, I would assume how big of a giant I would assume Coinbase is going to become. So that's got to be pretty cool to know you've got that, you know, always in your back pocket. Like, hey, I created that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it was a village, not just me, but I was the lead engineer on the project, and so, um, and it also, you know, we had to kind of champion it with the leadership because. It wasn't obvious that this was going to become a you know hundred million dollar a year revenue business or maybe a billion a year revenue business for Coinbase in the early days. Um, so we had to get a lot of we had to champion it with the leadership to get the engineering resources we needed to succeed. But um, it was great. Uh, I spent three years there, and then you know I got the the DeFi bug in twenty twenty <laughs> uh, DeFi summer. We Most can talk of us about did. that too, if you want. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel yeah, like everybody was. Minutes. I mean, I, I I come from banking. I my I did seven eight years in banking, from credit unions to mortgage to all that stuff. So when I first got into crypto in 2020, I bought Doge. It was the first crypto I ever bought, and I sold it way too early. If I'd have held it, it's still like today it would be worth six figures if I hadn't sold it. So I you know, but I had no idea what any of this was. But then when I found Algorand and I found Ethereum and I started seeing what it could become, I was like holy cow and then i started getting into DeFi. i started buying stuff and staking it putting it everywhere just because i was like this is you know i just found gold uh didn't and then obviously the bear market corrected me on that a little bit but yeah i mean i think everybody got sucked into DeFi summer yeah for sure and my first experience working with DeFi was in like fall of 2019 um so we had we had like a annual hackathon at coinbase where we would just get, get to spend like a week building cool new prototypes. Um, they may never see the light of day, like, but we got a chance to build cool new things with our friends. And at the time, I think it was like October, 2019, the compound team came in to Coinbase HQ and SF, and we were all hacking together for a week on the Coinbase price feed, which was basically a, the idea we had was, you know, what if we took the price of like, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum and all these assets that are on Coinbase Pro and signed them with like an Ethereum private key that Coinbase owns and then put them on chain so that people would know like the price data was accurate. It was actually signed by Coinbase. Um, and so we hacked with the compound team all week. Um, oh, they gave me this T-shirt, you know, uh, <laughs> 20 shout out to 2019 compound. Um, and then they used that price feed when they launched in DeFi summer, which I, I feel like compound and maybe synthetics before that, but compound was kind of like the catalyst for all the yield farming that was going on in DeFi summer, right? When they launched in like June, 2020, I think it was, um, I was all over that. I was like, wow, this is incredible. I can like, I can wrap my Bitcoin. I can supply it on compound. I can earn comp tokens. And I, I started just going down that rabbit hole and got really deep on DeFi. I created a signal, or sorry, a, a Slack group um, for like at Coinbase called DeFi. And that Slack group um, in 2020, 2021 became like, there were thousands of people in there. There were, there were as many people as, as any other Slack channel except for general. Um, and so wow. I think at Coinbase, many millionaires were made in that channel just from people getting alpha on like the latest DeFi projects uh, back in 2020, Heck 2021. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I should have got super deep match, on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and to this day, that channel still exists after I left Coinbase. But you know, I, while I was there, I I was working with Jesse Pollock, and he's a great guy. And I really wanted to start launching DAOs at Coinbase. Um, so after you know launching staking, I was like, we need to launch a liquid staking DAO. This was actually was my passion at the time. I was like. Let's, you know, let's do basically what Lido has done, right? Let's launch a liquid staking DAO. Uh, we can tokenize um, liquid staking assets, and then we can, uh, you know, basically use them in DeFi. Um, but the challenge was that, like, from a regulatory standpoint and legal yeah. standpoint, it would be super risky for Coinbase to start launching DAOs, right? Yeah. Um, and so Jesse at the time was working in this brand new, like, kind of an incubator within Coinbase that was working on like, how do we launch DAOs at Coinbase? And he was like, come work in my org. Um, we'll figure out a way to launch DAOs at Coinbase. 
but you got to be patient with me while I get the lawyers on board, right? <laughs> the legal team on board. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to his credit, um, so, you know, I actually left to launch Moonwell back in late 2021, early 2022. But to his credit, what Jesse has done is ma a masterstroke, is genius, because by creating base, he's created a way that all of us Coinbase alumni can actually launch DAOs on base as a layer two. Yeah. And now Coinbase can actually integrate with them in a, in a more safe way, right? Because, you know, Coinbase is a regulated U.S. company. They can't really launch DAOs, but uh, other projects like base. Moonwell, yeah, can launch DAOs. And then Coinbase can integrate with them and bring all of the great uh, like Web3 products that are on base to their retail customers. It's amazing.